In a previous BI Bytes video, I showed how to create basic KPIs in SharePoint Server 2010. In this demo, I'm going to show how to use Dashboard Designer and Performance Point services to create more advanced KPIs. In Dashboard Designer, I have this Performance Point content area where I see a list of items that have been created already, including a selection of KPI. If I want to create a new KPI, I go unsurprisingly to the Create tab of the ribbon and select KPI. I have two options here. I can create a KPI from scratch or I can create an objective. An objective allows you to combine other KPIs to create a higher level target. For this demo, I'm going to start with a blank KPI. I get the space to enter KPI details, and this might be a little confusing if you're not used to it. The KPI has an actual value and a target value. These are hopefully self-explanatory. The actual value is the number you're measuring, whether it is the monthly profit or the number of people who've done a piece of mandatory training. The target value is the goal that you want that number to equal. When a KPI is first created, it's not attached to a data source. It will be based on manually entered numbers, which is not particularly useful for creating a dynamic dashboard. In general, you will want the actual value to be based on live data. The target might or might not be, depending on how frequently the goal changes. To map the actual value to a data source, I'll come to this data mappings link. This KPI is initially mapped to just the number 1. If I click on Change Data Source, I can pick any data source I've created in Dashboard Designer. I'll choose this AdventureWorks Analysis Services connection that I created in the previous BI Bytes demo. I can choose from a range of measurements. I'll choose this gross profit value. Sometimes you might want to filter the data in the data source, but for now I'll just click OK. I could go through the same procedure to connect the target to a data source, but I'll just change this to a different fixed number. The next thing to do is to set the scoring pattern and indicator. This is really where we see the big difference between what you can do with simple SharePoint KPIs and what you can do in Performance Point Services. There are three main scoring patterns, increasing, decreasing or close to target. I'll choose this close to target option. Next, I can choose from a range of indicator icons. There are gauges, flags, thermometers, traffic lights, smiley faces, weather images, a whole range of different options. You can even build your own custom indicators using a standard image type. I'll choose this half gauge option. Finally, I need to set the worst value that could be entered, and then I just click Finish. Now I see a completely different view at the bottom. Here are a range of thresholds for changing the appearance of my indicator, where the goal is in the middle and it gradually gets worse to either side. I could tweak these thresholds to give the best view of my data, so I can have this KPI give the clearest view of the values in my data source.